Okay, this is the last novel of Star Trek. And then I have to finish The Nitpickers, which is a not a novel, but it's a book of different Star Trek episodes where there's mistakes. Excuse me, and they talk about them, which is pretty interesting. But this is Star Trek Avenger, and this is a crossover with Kirk and Picard. And, you know, these are pretty good, but they, they just didn't really make any sense because... A lot of it had to, I don't know, some of them had to do with the, what you would call Star Trek Generations when they had that episode when they, Kirk supposedly died on a planet, but some of these novels take place after that. And it, it's just, it's kind of stupid. I mean, um, hey, maybe it would have been nice if they made a movie to that, but the problem is William Shatner was too old to make any Star Trek movies after that, in my opinion. That was like his last hurrah in that movie, for Star Trek at least. He's still doing all crazy things, but like I said, he would have never went into space if he wasn't famous. Okay. Although Kirk appeared to perish at the conclusion of Star Trek Generations, the biggest bestseller of the return revealed the amazing story of Kirk's resurrection. Now William Shatner brings his distinctive blend of talents as actor, writer, director, and producer to continue the saga of Jim Kirk's second life and to reunite one of the greatest teams of any future century, Star Trek Avenger. Alito Rorogen, inimical to all conventional forms of planet life, threatens the entire Federation with starvation and dissolution. In the moment of Starfleet's greatest need, Captain James T. Kirk, long, long believed dead, embarks on a desperate quest to find the true source of the mysterious Rorogen. Elsewhere in the galaxy, Ambassador Spock has diplomatic efforts stalled by the spread of famine and chaos, returns to the native world of Vulcan to confront a mystery of deeply personal nature, an investigation that soon leads him to reunite with a long lost friend he never expected to see again. Kirk and Spock together again must join forces to save a new generation from an awesome menace unleashed by a ruthless interplanetary conspiracy. See, this is where it's going a little too far. Full of high adventure and powerful drama, Star Trek Avenger is an engrossing new Star Trek epic and a moving tale of past memories and new hope that William Shatner could tell. William Shatner has a great voice, and you would... And, th and, th and you would think that would translate over to documentaries. He made his own documentary called The Captain's Collection. I showed you that once before. I did it in a boxing. He has a great voice, but when he did The Captain's Collection, it was so poorly put together when he interviewed all the captains. It was like a, some high school kid did it with his video camera. I mean, if he put a little more effort into it, it would have been nice, but I don't think the studios really supported him on a lot of things he did. He had to go off and venture himself. Um, his support in him was Captain Kirk, but I think that's as far as they wanted to really do it. And he rubbed a lot of people the wrong way in the Star Trek universe, too. St um, running time was approximately three hours. It was in 97 this book was made. $18 in the U.S., $24 in Canada. Just like the last crossover episode, which was 17 in the U.S., 23 in Canada. So... It was a little different, by off by a buck, and this was the um, um, the other one. I, the last one we read was two years before this, so I have no more Star Trek novels. I've pretty much read them all, so now I'm on the cross pick or whatever the hell it's called. I think it's this. I did one of them already, and there's like four, three or four parts to it. I only have the first two. Um, I don't believe it. It might be on CD. I don't know, but I have it on cassette. So I might as well, if I get it again, buy it on cassette. Um, that's that. So, you know, Star Trek Avenger, William Shatner, audio cassettes. Um, I really enjoyed these. Um, the problem with going out to buy a bunch of them again is that I'll probably end up with a bunch of duplicates. So I'm going to just focus on Deep Space Nine. That's the funny thing. Out of all these books, there wasn't one single Deep Space Nine book. There was all Next Generation and original Star Trek. And even one Star Trek Voyager can't take a book. But no Deep Space Nine at all. So I guess this person just didn't like Deep Space Nine. But that's my favorite. Alright, bye bye